Jezebel's plot against a man named Naboth. This gets very interesting today. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Rod Hemmer. And I'm Janice. And this is Bible Discovery TV, a program taking you through the Bible from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22. We do that every year. It's very good. Corey is also here to help us. Corey, what's up? We're looking at Naboth's vineyard today. All right, very good. We'll talk about that. And Janice, what did you do? It's a day to talk about Naboth. So Naboth, Naboth is the main guy to be talked about today. Actually, I'm going to teach on him too. Very good. <laughs> Ryan is here. Ryan, what's up? Today in celebration of our 30th year through the Bible, I'm going to be reading an excerpt from our Quick Study Bible. All right, 30 years through the Bible. It is very exciting. We are happy about that. We'll talk more about that later on as we get into the program. But right now, let's begin the study and look at what God has said to us so we can listen. First Kings chapter 21, verses 1 through 16. And it came to pass after these things that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard which was in Jezreel next to the palace of Ahab king of Samaria. So Ahab spoke to Naboth, saying, Give me your vineyard, that I may have it for a vegetable garden, because it is near, next to my house, and for it I will give you a vineyard better than it, or, if it seems good to you, I will give you its worth in money. But Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid that I should give the inheritance of my fathers to you. So Ahab went into his house sullen and displeased because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give you the inheritance of my fathers. And he lay down on his bed and turned away his face and would eat no food. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said to him, Why is your spirit so sullen that you eat no food? He said to her, Because I spoke to Naboth the Jezreelite and said to him, Give me your vineyard for money, or else, if it pleases you, I will give you another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give you my vineyard. Then Jezebel, his wife, said to him, You now exercise authority over Israel. Arise. Eat food and let your heart be cheerful. I will give you the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. And she wrote letters in Ahab's name, sealed them with his seal, and sent the letters to the elders and the nobles who were dwelling in the city with Naboth. She wrote in the letters saying, Proclaim a fast and seat Naboth with high honor among the people and seat two men, scoundrels, before him to bear witness against him, saying, You have blasphemed God and the king. Then take him out and stone him, that he may die. So the men of his city, the elders and nobles who were the inhabitants of his city, did as Jezebel had sent to them, as it was written in the letters which she sent to them. They proclaimed a fast and seated Naboth, with high honor among the people. And two men, scoundrels, came in and sat before him. And the scoundrels witnessed against him, against Naboth, in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth has blasphemed God and the king. Then they took him outside the city and stoned him with stones so that he died. Then they sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth has been stoned and is dead. And it came to pass, when Jezebel heard that Naboth had been stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, which he refused to give you for money, for Naboth is not alive, but dead. So it was, when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, that Ahab got up and went down to take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. 1 Kings chapter 21, verses 1 through 16. There is a great violation when men in leadership assume they have authority over others and take control of them and their possessions. Now, this is a violation of government at the most basic level. 
According to the Bible, we were never meant to have dominion over each other, but over the things that we own. Now, during the time under King Ahab, Queen Jezebel, evidence of how dark things actually were, became more and more transparent. Now, Ahab becomes like a small child, not wanting to share toys, especially when his eyes lit up for a vineyard beside his palace and wants to plant a vegetable garden. Ahab tries to negotiate a deal with Naboth, the owner of the land, but he refuses to sell it because of his father's inheritance from God. King Ahab goes home unhappy, crying and refusing to eat. Jezebel comes in and claims that she will take care of business for him. And an evil, elaborate scheme is put in place and Naboth is framed and killed. Hearing about Naboth's death, Ahab takes possession of the vineyard. And this happened because Jezebel felt they could do whatever they wanted in Israel because of their misplaced sense of how authority and leadership actually works. How leadership actually works. Now think about that. That's very important. How does leadership really work? And this is where we get into what we're going to talk about today. I want what I want. I want what I want. And on this last day of March, it's a good time for you and I to consider what God says. In fact, it's said that sin or missing the mark or going against God is best explained by saying, it's I want what I want when I want it. Now, there's a lot of eyes in there, isn't it? I, I, and I. But you see, it's important for us to recognize that's what sin is all about. And so we need to thank God that we are fighting against sin and thank God that we have the, the sense when we invited Jesus Christ in our life, if we did, to come against sin, beloved. Very important. Take your Bible guide, turn to today's passage because it is an interesting one as we read about Jezebel and Ahab. And if you don't have a Bible guide, why not? You can write for yours using the addresses at the bottom of the screen, or you can go to BibleDiscoveryTV.com and get a hold of yours. Simply ask for it when you make a donation. And it's on digital form, so we really like that. We really appreciate that. So as we begin to focus on 1 Kings chapter 21, let's pray. Father, help us today to understand exactly what you're saying to us and how you're saying it. In the name of Jesus Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit, that is what we ask. And we all said together, amen. Now look at this, 1 Kings 21, verses 1 to 7. And it came to pass after these things that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard which was in Jezreel next to the place of Ahab, king of Samaria. And so Ahab spoke to Naboth saying, give me your vineyard that I may have it for a vegetable garden because it is near next to my house. And for it, I will give you a vineyard better than it. Or if it seems good to you, I will give you its worth in money. But Naboth said to Ahab, Lord forbid that I should give my inheritance of my father's to you. And so Ahab went into his house sullen and displeased because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him. For he said, I will not give you the inheritance of my father's. And he lay down on his bed and turned away his face and would eat no food. But Jezebel, his wife, came into him and said to him, why is your spirit so sullen that you eat no food? And he said to her, because I spoke to Naboth, the Jezreelite, and said to him, give me your vineyard for money or else if it pleases you, I will give you another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give you my vineyard. And then Jabel, his wife, said to him, you exercise authority over Israel. Arise, eat food, and I will let your heart be cheerful. I, I, I will give you the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. Now, this is fascinating. Ahab is confronted with the laws protecting Israel's land holding families. Now, Jezebel assumes her leadership has authority over and above God's leadership. Jezebel makes the assumption, as she would if she is, does not know God, which she did not, that she can do whatever she wants because she's the wife of the leader. 
Now that's what the thinking is. Well, here's what happened. First Kings 28, eight, and she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal and sent the letters to the elders and the nobles who were dwelling in the city with Naboth. And she wrote in the letter saying, listen carefully, proclaim a fast and seat Naboth with high honor among the people and seat the two men, these are scoundrels, before him to bear witness against him, to lie about him, saying, you have blasphemed God and the king, and then take him and out and stone him that he may die. So the men of the city, the elders and the nobles who were inhabitants of the city did as Jabel said and sent him as it was written in the letters which she had sent to them. And they proclaimed a fast and seated Naboth with high honor and among the people. And the two men, the scoundrels, came in and sat before him. And the scoundrels witnessed against him, against Naboth, in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth has blasphemed God and taken, and, and, the, and the king, rather. And then they took him outside the city and stoned him with stones so that he died. And then they sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth has been stoned and is dead. Now that's amazing, beloved. Jezebel sets Naboth up to be framed and to be killed. And the responsibility of leadership is to help us, not take from us. Jezebel had the responsibility of leadership wrong and, and Ahab followed her. And this is exactly what was wrong with Israel, the nation to the north. Beloved, leadership is about serving others, not serving yourself, serving others. Very important today in our political schemes. We should remember that. Now watch this. 1 Kings chapter 21, 15 and 16. And it came to pass when Jezebel heard that Naboth had been stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, which he refused to give you for money. For Naboth is not alive, but he is dead. And so it was. When Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, that Ahab got up and went down to take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. Fascinating. And this brings us to our last point that we really need to do carefully. We need to listen to this. Jezebel's plot against Naboth seems to be successful. Evil seems to have won. But the Lord condemns Ahab. He does. We'll find out later on exactly what happens. God does not measure success the way the world does or the way we do. Success is very different in the eyes of God. Beloved, we must pay attention to the Bible when it talks about God seeing not as we see and God hearing not as we hear. We have to see that God understands things differently. He sees our heart. And we have to understand that. We have to realize that we need to pray before we make any move because any move we make may seem right to us, but that's not it. Beloved, let's not follow Jezebel and go her ways, but let's follow Jesus Christ and go his ways because Jesus Christ helps us to pray, Lord, help me to follow your ways and be a good leader. Today, you and I are going to be zeroing in on the time period of King Ahab and Jezebel. Of course, there's a lot of famous prophets, or there's one famous prophet at the very least uh, from the Bible, Elijah, alive during this time period. Uh, So it's a really interesting one because we have the historical accounts from the Bible, but we also have some of these episodic uh, accounts from the lives of Ahab, Jezebel, and Elijah. Today, we're going to be focusing in 
on one from that of Ahab and Jezebel, this episode with a man named Naboth. Ahab wants his vineyard, Naboth's vineyard, uh, but Naboth does not want to give it up. It doesn't end well for Naboth. Jezebel steps in, has him uh, murdered, essentially. Archaeologists have found an area that may have belonged to Naboth. So that's what you and I are going to be focusing in on right now. The city of Jezreel belonged to northern Israel and seems to have been a very important place during the Omri dynasty, the kings of Israel descended from King Omri. Omri's family history with Jezreel begins in the Bible with King Ahab and Queen Jezebel murdering a man for his vineyard. Naboth's vineyard is said to have been next to their palace in Jezreel. It was his family's land. Later in their history, Ahab and Jezebel's son becomes king and is fighting a war in Ramoth Gilead. When he's injured, he comes back to Jezreel, but a usurper was on his tail. Jehu, a commander in the Israelite military, had come to take the throne. When the king rode out to meet him, Jehu killed him with an arrow and had his body dumped in Naboth's vineyard as a symbol of divine justice for Ahab and Jezebel's earlier evil. Jehu then entered the city where he was confronted by Jezebel, and he had her thrown down from an upper window and murdered. This bloody history implies Jezreel's importance as a military outpost. There's a royal structure there, it was used as a home base in times of war, and was surrounded by lush cultivated land that could grow food and wine to supply an army. Archaeological work has confirmed that Jezreel was a strongly fortified city with a large rectangular city wall, complete with a tower on each corner and a deep artificial moat. Its history also leaves us hints to the location of Naboth's vineyard. Traveling from the battlefront, Jehu would have approached from the east and met Joram in Naboth's vineyard. During surveys and excavations of this area, archaeologists uncovered a large ancient winery to the east of Jezreel. Dug right into the bedrock that ensured its survival, it was a treading floor and two carved vats to hold the freshly squeezed wine. Wineries like this could have been in use for hundreds and thousands of years as long as there was someone cultivating vineyards. These were permanent, cut right into the earth. And while the structures that would have surrounded this installation have long since deteriorated, it can't be coincidence that right outside the city of Jezreel, to the east, is evidence of a large ancient winery and vineyard exactly where the Bible said one was. How awesome is this? This is one of those circumstances where it's just perfect that the ancient people dug their vineyards right into the bedrock here surrounding Samaria because now we're able to actually uh, know what the Bible was talking about, where the Bible was talking about this incident between Ahab and Jezebel and unfortunately Naboth right in his family vineyard. This doesn't always happen because there's thousands of years of history between us and them. So the land is the same. Yes, the geography is the same, but there's been thousands of years of people living on the land. So there's been uh, destruction, reconstruction, building, lots of things that happen. Uh, but nevertheless, this is one of those perfect instances where history can really help us understand, uh, you know, in a very physical way, uh, where a story of the Bible took place. So really, really, really fun study today. I'm going to pass it over to you though, Ryan. Ryan, what do you have for us? Well, it's exciting. You know, guys, this is our 30th year through the Bible. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't believe it. 30 years. Yeah. And it was founded by your father, my our grandfather, mm -hmm, grandfather, Ron Hembry, back in 1990. And, you know, as I've been going through my personal reading this year, I've been actually reading through our Quick Study Bible, which many of you have, and that was produced by my grandfather. So I thought what I would do every once in a while is uh, share some of his notes with you. So today I want to do that. And his focus on this episode was 1 Kings chapter 21, verses 17 through 28. And uh, he asked us to consider this. The infamous criminal, John Dillinger, was a machinist from Indiana when he started on his crime spree. He became one of America's most wanted criminals, the first and only man named public enemy number one. Dillinger's gang of brutal robbers included two other infamous criminals, Charles Pretty Boy Floyd and George Babyface Nelson, an impulsive killer whose murders were blamed on Dillinger. Betrayed by a woman he knew, Dillinger was gunned down by FBI agents outside a Chicago movie theater in 1934. Now, crime doesn't pay, as Dillinger learned too late. 
Ahab was not only Israel's king, but a brutal criminal as well. The Bible says there never was a man like Ahab who sold himself to do evil in the eyes of the Lord, urged on by Jezebel, his wife. He behaved in the vilest manner by going after idols. Elijah repeatedly called him to task, but the wicked ruler refused to listen. Spurred on by his equally evil wife Jezebel, Ahab brought the nation to an all-time moral low. One day soon, dogs would greedily lick up Ahab and Jezebel's blood. Hmm. Now, he also included six life lessons, and I'm going to read them. The first one was, ill-gotten gain brings no pleasure. Ahab had stolen Naboth's vineyard, but God would not let him enjoy it. Life lesson number two, our reaction to rebuke should be repentance. Ahab was furious, though, when he saw Elijah. Life lesson number three, we can run, but we can't hide. Elijah told Ahab he found him because the king had given himself to evil. Life lesson number four, our evil falls far into the future. Not only would Ahab suffer for his sins, his family would also know pain. Number five, partial repentance is never enough. Ahab repented a little, but did not restore the vineyard to Naboth's heirs. And, and lastly, number six, God's love is so great that even the vilest can find mercy. Ahab is spared the harshest judgment because he humbled himself before God. Now, he also included here some fascinating facts, and that is that archaeological discoveries give further knowledge about wicked King Ahab. An inscription to Shalmaneser mentions Ahab, saying, I destroyed 2,000 chariots and 10,000 men of Ahab, king of Israel. In addition, the ruins of Ahab's famed ivory house in Samaria have been found. Its walls had been faced with costly ivory, and there were thousands of pieces of the most exquisitely carved and inlaid panels, plaques, cabinets, and couches. The ivory house is located just above the ruins of Omri's palace, the famous father and predecessor of Ahab. And finally, he had the application, which he said, terrified at Elijah's words, Ahab collapses in tears. But we soon learn that he did not really repent. His continued evil eventually causes him to lose his life. In spite of many warnings, Ahab and Jezebel stumble on toward their deaths. Mm. It's amazing, you know, and, and you know, dad was, uh, he loved history. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. he really, he really did good at bringing history into what, what it means to us today. Mm -hmm. And that's very good. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah, and, and we all would always lose when we were playing trivial games with him. <laughs> yeah. He always knew all these yeah. little... Did, nobody could touch yeah. him. I mean, he was just, you know... And you know. reading through his notes, I'm like, no wonder he, he did all this research. He just loved it, right? <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah. So he yeah. read, I think... I just wanted two, to share it. Two books a week. Yeah, yeah. he always For, had his he nose had his, in a book. His yeah. nose always. is... I mean, he would, he'd be walking and he'd be reading. I mean, it was amazing. <laughs> he was always reading, reading, reading. Uh, but uh, I loved my dad very much. Mm -hmm. And uh, he passed away in 2010, suddenly, after teaching on the program and all of that. Some of you will remember that. But uh, anyway, dad was a good man. Mm -hmm. And we'll see him again. That's for sure. Janice? Look forward to that day. Well, we've talked a lot about Naboth today. And there's something that I want to bring out because we've talked about Ahab and Jezebel and this evil plot that Jezebel came up with in order to get Naboth's vineyard. And the reason that Naboth was so incensed when Ahab approached him was because that had been left to his family line. Those were where his boundaries lay and he was not to give that land away. That was something that they had covenanted the Israelites with God. So of course Naboth wouldn't give Ahab his land. So what we don't read here in this account in 1 Kings 21, but it clearly would have happened for what we read in 2 Kings chapter 9, verses 25 to 26, is that the male heirs of Naboth would have also been killed at the same time. Because as long as Naboth had surviving heirs, that land belonged to his family. So if you go forward in your Bible to 2 Kings chapter 9, verses 25 and 26, we have Jehu talking here to the captain of his army, Bidkar. And they've just had some discussions actually in the field of Naboth, which is quite ironic. But starting at verse 25, then Jehu said to Bidkar, his captain, pick him up and throw him into the tract of the field of Naboth, the Jezreelite. For remember, when you and I were riding together behind Ahab, and behind Ahab, his father, that the Lord laid this burden upon him. And this is 
um, Jehu telling Bidkar what God had said to Ahab. Surely I saw yesterday the blood of Naboth and the blood of his sons, hmm. says the Lord. And I will repay you in this plot, says the Lord. Now, therefore, take and throw him on the plot of ground, Jehu says, according to the word of the Lord. So we see here that, in fact, it wasn't just Naboth here that was stoned. His sons, any heir to that land would have also been taken. Imagine the devastation yeah. over a vineyard that Ahab wanted because he wanted to plant a garden, a vegetable garden. And, yeah. you know, so Jezebel had no regard for life and, and neither did Ahab, obviously. And, and you see that oftentimes we always go to Jezebel, mm -hmm. right? And we forget that Ahab was just as evil and just because, and weak. just because, yes, and weak, just because you have non-reaction doesn't mean that you're not doing the reaction as well. Mm -hmm. He allowed yeah. Jezebel, he would have known when she said, don't worry about it, I'll take care of it. He would have known right there, it's going to be a dastardly plot mm -hmm. and yeah. he let her do it. So, yeah. you know, we need to remember, um, and, and, and your grandfather's point is well taken, how that, you know, you see Ahab cry and lament, but then he turned exactly back and still continued on with the life that he had. And that's the difference. When you decide in your life that you want to change, you know that you're tired of living the way this world requires you to live. You're tired of that. And you want to come to the Lord Jesus and you make that decision to turn to him and live and follow him. Then you ask forgiveness of your sins and then you turn away from that. And with the help of the Lord Jesus Christ, his Holy Spirit fills you. You can now begin to change with his help the things and get rid of those things that keep you away from the Lord Jesus. That's true repentance.